Hi everyone, I'm Matteo Collina, one of the creators of the Fastify framework. Um, a lot of people have been asking me uh, what are the technical principle, principles that where the framework uh, originated and why we created such, such a framework and how we make certain decisions. For example, should this feature come in or should this feature not come in? Okay, and what should be part of the framework and what not? And there's been a few debates online, on you know, tech Twitter and all sort of stuff, where we ended up discussing about those things. So we were asking, should we, and you know, every framework was actually explaining um, what were their design choices and what they thought to do in certain situations. So I have, uh, uh, as, as part of that work, I have put together a, a page, I've documented a page, more or less what um, Thomas de la Vedova, the other creator of uh, uh, Fastify, and myself uh, put together. And we were actually describing and thinking about stuff. And what we have done uh, was um, the, was this uh, this document that you can find in the in the info box, but uh, it's also good I think to provide a little bit of commentary and discuss it a little bit with all of you those things. So the first one, it's uh, um, uh, we want a framework that could provide zero overhead in production. What does it mean zero overhead? Well, you know there is the performance that Node.js can achieve just by using JavaScript, okay, and uh, and, and, and what we want, we want to say, well, if Node.js can do X, we want Fastify to do as, as much as X as possible. Okay, so, you know, if there is X and that, you know, we need to both things to match. Now, um, JavaScript is a language with, um, it's a garbage collected language with uh, which allocate data structures. So it's technically not possible to create something that is completely zero over it and it does not have any cost. So you will have a little bit of cost to pay. However, there are certain techniques uh, on the, uh, that V8 and, the, and JavaScript on time supply to minimize the cost of such allocations, but also uh, the cost of, for example, function calling. Uh, I'm referring to uh, function inlining as an example. So it, it's great, okay? So basically, uh, we want to provide such a, such a framework. Now consider this, when Fastify came out, it was originally in 2016 when we started, when Thomas and myself started working on this, we had the uh, opportunity to, uh, we, we, the, the ecosystem was actually uh, very problematic in this regard. There were no good options if you wanted to build a fast application on top of Node.js. If you want to combine a very a great developer experience with a good performance, it was actually very hard. And if there was some, we put together some benchmarks and things like that, and there was absolutely no way to achieve this with uh, uh, any other framework. So um, this is why uh, performance is such one of the critical things about Fastify. Well, at, however, it's a framework, okay? And this comes on the second principle. We want to provide a good developer experience. It's, it, you know, you want performance, but on the other end, you don't want to compromise on, on the developer experience for that performance. This is actually very important. Why? Well, uh, for example, you could, you know, make things a lot faster, for example, if you use a native add-on. However, using and adding a native add-on to our framework has always been a no-no because uh, it would look clearly cripple the developer experience, requiring a compiler, a toolchain, and all sorts of things to get the most out of the framework. So this is actually very important. On the other hand, we started to, we also added a few good things that are necessary for the developers. So we added uh, logging, mm -hmm. we added a bunch of stuff that was actually, uh, actually required. So it's, uh, it, it's great, okay? It's totally, uh, it's, it's totally amazing. So um, what we wanted to provide also was a framework that could work for both a small project and large projects. Why? Well, it's, um, you, you know, I've seen so many applications that were essentially um, 
crippled when moving in the large, okay, when starting building um, large system or big systems with um, large system or big systems uh, with other frameworks. So uh, we wanted something that could be you will, could be easily start splitting up your applications into multiple modules, multiple components without having to uh, compromise on performance. Other frameworks could allow this, but they could compromise on performance or they did not provide complete encapsulation. What does it mean? Uh, you know, it's you want to have different parts of your application to have potentially different dependencies, for example. This is one of the key features that made Node.js so good. So it's, it's, it's great. Um, because of that, in fact, that's why uh, we were, you know, a corollary of this or a complementary principle is we wanted a framework that could work for building monoliths, building microservices and moving from monoliths to microservices and even to serverless and even that was added uh, later on, okay? And uh, uh, because of that, you know, these were fundamental parts. On the functional side, we uh, wanted something that could be, we could provide great validation. And we wanted data validation to be a built-in concept. Now, most developers do not validate the inputs that are received from uh, untrusted sources. For example, you know, from a post request or even query parameters or even HTTP headers, which it actually makes it very, very hard to get those things done. So all of this makes it very hard to, uh, you know, you need to have, the, the whole framework needs to take care of this and help you do that, okay? If you do it yourself, you will probably slip all. You will, it's a slippery slope and you might, you know, ah, I don't know. So exactly that, you didn't, you want to provide uh, uh, some data validation if you consume those things. And this is actually extremely, extremely important. So that's, that's actually why we ship with built-in data validation. And when we were starting to look into this, um, we uh, started using um, JSON schema, which is a standard. And JSON schema is actually great because if you have a standard, it's a, uh, it's a very, it, it, it can be implemented by multiple uh, libraries. And uh, this is, it, this, it's great for everybody, essentially. And instead you could use, for example, other data validators, but if you use data validators, it's not a standard. What does it mean? It does not have a format. So JSON schema is a format, okay? It's just, it's pure configuration. A validation library, it's code that typically generates code. So you have code, so you have some code here, and you have some code over here, and you have configuration. Now, uh, in order to make JSON schema actionable, you need a library that interprets JSON schema and generates a validator from it, okay? Which is great. Um, but then it means that you could potentially swap libraries because most of your JSON schema definitions will stay exactly the same. It's great. As I said, it's a great, great thing. So I, I, I really like that concept, to be honest. So I am very, very fond of, of, that, the, of this approach. In fact, using JSON schema also allowed later, us later on to provide open API, automatic uh, Swagger and open API spec specification generation from, for your system, enabling you to just, by just installing a plugin to automatically create uh, open API definitions and all those things that are great for building clients and integrations and so on and so forth. So, it's perfect. So then, the, uh, the, the next one is um, uh, it's it's actually very important because it's uh, it's one of the key principles that has guided the evolution of the Fastify ecosystem, which is uh, if something could be a plugin, it likely should. What does it mean? Why this why this important? What does it mean? Well, if the, something is a plugin you need, um, so if you want everything to be a plugin, you need to have a pluggable system. So Fastify is essentially a, um, it has a lot of options, it has a lot of configuration, it has a lot of hooks that allows all those plugins to uh, jump in and modify and, and add behaviors in certain places and customize the things that make Fastify Fastify. It's great. Uh, uh, and you need this, it needs to, it's in comparison or as an alternative to monkey patching. 
because other frameworks to achieve the same things do a lot of monkey patching. Monkey patching is actually one uh, a very, very uh, odd practice that essentially crippled performance of runtimes, which it's a little bit odd. So don't do monkey patching and please, um, yeah, essentially. So, and if you don't do monkey patching, then uh, 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 you know you need hooks and configuration and things like that to be able to plug everything in. And so, um, if something could be a plugin, it's a plugin. It should be. A, it likely should. And uh, this has created an ecosystem of almost three hundred plugins, as I record this, which is amazing, all things considered. So, yay! I think it's a, it's a great, great. Uh, it's a great, great thing, and I encourage all of you to test out all the plugins that are the part of the Fastify ecosystem, which I, it's something that I that I absolutely and generally love. Um, and uh, connected to this, there is the fact that we do not want to monkey patch Node Core. I've the, one of the most popular framework express in order to work monkey patches Node Core, um, limiting the changes that Node Core can ship, but also uh, making it. Uh, uh, um, somewhat very hard to uh, to test and integrate with because, as I said, it's uh, monkey patching not core. Okay, like it's uh, it's very odd. So um, we want to, we don't want to end up in the same situation. We wanted a system, uh, uh, and this is the reason, for example, that Express could not use HTTP, cannot run on top of HTTP two. You need uh, Fastify or Coa or some other frameworks to run on top of HTTP. I don't know if Coa can run HTTP. Anyway, it doesn't matter but you need Fastify or something else to run on top of Node Core HTTP 2 because it does not, Fastify does not monkey patch any private API or any API at all. Uh, we also wanted something that was easily, easily testable, which is um, one of the key principles essentially of Fastify. Uh, we wanted something that allowed you to test your application without having to spin up a server, listening to a port, and all those sort of sharing us. That adds latency. So you could actually write blazing fast tests without having to listen to anything. It's great. You can just call uh, the inject.inject .inject function, and this is, it's, it's actually super easy to do. Um, uh, you know, the, the last few principles are uh, as essentially are probably as practical. One is um, uh, we want uh, to have a long-term support schedule and we wanted it to be uh, uh, to follow semantic versioning very closely. And there's not much to say about this, but we typically do a release every, a major release every year or a couple of years, and then it's maintained for a few. We are now at Fastify 4 and uh, Fastify 3 just got out of LTS. So if you're using Fastify 3, you should have been updated in the last year or so. And we are probably start talking about shipping Fastify v5 that would probably have a minimum version, Node 18, which is great. And um, the last principle is about specification adherence. So uh, Fastify is stricter than other frameworks in how to interpret HTTP, the HTTP standard, uh, because we believe that's the only way to uh, implement robust and secure applications. So we typically strive to make sure uh, all those things are implemented correctly according, according to the standards, the specs, and so on, which is, of course, uh, always very important. Uh, having said that, I went through all the 10 technical principles of uh, Fastify. So I, uh, if you have any questions, please reply in, in, the, the, um, in the comments under the video or you can reach out to me on Twitter or on my newsletter and so on and so forth. And uh, I want to uh, thank uh, uh, Platformatic for helping out and uh, uh, supporting me in this video. So yay, it's uh, thank you. Um, check us out, we are great in, in doing everything. Um, uh, API and everything Fastify. So, Thank you very much and uh, see you soon. Bye.